Welcome back, uh, Dr. Bai. I, mean, I know you have a lot of cases, yes. but I mean, examples. But they always say that, look, in this kind of cases, there's always a giver and a taker. Yes. So, in this case, because some have argued that, yes, focus is on the judiciary, but what about those who induce them? Shouldn't something, some sort of searchlight be on them such that if we're talking about the fight against corruption, it should fear no foe? So, whoever is accused should also face the music. The law does not focus on the giver with regard to judges. It focuses on the receiver. So when their lordship in the Supreme Court were saying that uh, Ameshi came to them and so on as that, those are not serious issues. Ameshi can go to them. There's no law that says Ameshi cannot go to a judge. The regulation is for the judge not to allow Ameshi to come into his house. Doesn't that raise question about politicians too putting pressure on Julie on perhaps judges? Yes, it is true. There are lots of politicians in this country who put judges on payroll in this country. But the point I'm making is that when you are offered with regard to judges, it is the code of the ethic that they should stay away from appearance, not just from impropriety, appearance of impropriety. And the problem of this country is that, for example, why is it that we haven't got one statement from any of them? I am not corrupt. I'm ready to go to any extent. Take me to court. To the, the judges? Yes. Take me to court. I'm not corrupt. There was a time when I first ran for government. So are you suggesting that all the judges are corrupt? I'm not saying all the judges are corrupt. I'm saying corruption in is it has become a culture, an enterprise, a beneficial enterprise mm. among Dr. many of the judges. Let's bring Mark Wayne. She, she's got the question. I'm making. Mark Wayne. And we are in trouble. trouble. Well, I was hoping that, you know, we'll first of all get that instance. You know, he was talking about um, uh, giving us the last instance from the Supreme Court. What exactly was your experience there? Well, would you, would you, sorry, I didn't get more questions. She's talking about your experience in Supreme Court. Well, the, the point I'm making is that two, I would say, talk of two instances in, with regard to the Supreme Court. It is a greatly abnormal to accuse the Supreme Court justice of corruption. I said the lawyer did that. Now, the other issue is the government to investigate a lot of cases of instances of where the registrars of the lower federal courts build houses from public funds for Supreme Court. Yes, instances. There's an instance in which a judge who was a registrar was expected to provide some kind of funds for a higher judge and the woman refused. And the chief judge, in an attempt to intimidate that justice, directed, filed a complaint, directed the commissioner of police, huh. used the commissioner against the judge. And then the commissioner of police invited the judge to report in his office. The justice came to me and provided the case because he was resisting this corruption. Then I wrote to the commissioner, I said, you better just withdraw your invitation. So Otherwise, it's a, it's I will case, break down this the, whole system. So it's a case of the, those it who, is a case who of, are good being bullied. It, you got it, a case of the, the guilty persecuting the innocent. And that is what is going on in this but, country. But we keep pretending. If this case gets to court, yes, many just wonder because, look, there are so many of these things that people talk about, but at the end of the day, it's got to be proven beyond reasonable doubt yes, in court. it will be proven. You think this will? Yeah, there's another aspect of it too. Sexual corruption. Where, in the judiciary? In the judiciary. How does Many that, how of does that, the judges, I'm work? telling you what I know. We are about this nation, to build this nation, to give honor to the people, and to have regard in the world. There are judges who spend their time, especially in the states. They keep employing women in the, in the magistrate courts and keep 
forcibly having an affair with them, intimidating them, harassing them, including married women. I know what I'm talking about. A married woman came to me and told me that this is what happened to me, and he had to tell the husband and told the husband, what can I do? My husband has no job. This is the only job I have. What can I do? In you know, if I don't agree, the man will sack me. You know, but we, you know. we also heard them uh, talk about how these judges are appointed. We yes. had someone who was in the NBA. He was complaining that, look, when they bring this list, they give the advice, but they are not listened to. So they're appointing officers too. Isn't well, that the appointing process is so, so corrupted. It is not a matter of influence. It's just a matter of influence peddling. Usually, ideally, the best legal minds should be judges. The most un uncorruptible judges. There was a time in this country we had people like J.I.C. Taylor. We had the liars. We had leaders of the of the of the bench, leader world leaders of the bench, yeah, yeah. and they are brought from all over the world. They are invited. Are we there today? Even the problem is that if you even go there, you make argument, sound legal argument. You just wasting your time. You know, that's one beauty of logic. Uh, and again, if you look at history, uh, you would have seen that so many of these legal minds have even gone ahead outside the country to head the judiciary in other parts of the world. Yes. And these are great Nigerians. But it comes down to how we got here, because one would have thought that, uh, you know, logic tells you if A, B, then you know the outcome. And when you come before a judge and you know that this could be the outcome and it doesn't even get close to it, you know that something definitely uh, yes. would have, must have happened. Yes. How did we get there? Because now you just told us of the golden days of our judiciary with those great men like Elias yes. and the others. How did we I get to Guda, going to Botswana, so, Gambia. Gambia. So, so how did we, how, so how how did, did we, how did we get, get to this rot? Well, is it not the same rot that is pervading the entire nation? In on this your program, I have told you, Corruption in Nigeria is like a wasting disease. At the early stage, it's difficult to detect, but easy to kill. We are now at a late stage, it has metastasized, and it is now easy to detect, but difficult to kill. Suggest so solutions to us, Doctor. Solutions is that the NJC should be empowered properly, should, should be conscious of its responsibility. NJC is complaining that something. That how can you be waiting for a petition to be written when you have such a serious job and you are pre you 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 are pre pre prevailing over the justice of a nation? But that's how many go government agencies, including the anti-corruption ones, uh, function. They yes. wait for petition. So they should function differently because their responsibility. Is there is there any other government agency that says that you should stay away from impropriety, not only from impropriety, but even an appearance of it? Can you touch a shadow? Can you hold a shadow? You can hold a human being. He says you should stay away from that human being you can touch. Not just that human being, but even a shadow, an appearance of it. What did they what the did they argue that high responsibility? What did they argue that nobody brought it to our notice? We're not aware of this. They are not, it's not supposed to be brought to their notice. They are supposed to find out. They are supposed to have a system to monitor the judges. I have a situation where they, 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 they involve in one of these judges, a case that is clear. And then it they was involve one, of these? one of the judges. It was a clear case. It was the opposing party that told us when the judgment will be delivered. Even the register of that court didn't know. The opposing party told us when the judgment will, and on the day of the judgment, all the DG, all of them were in court to listen to their judgment, wow. not the judgment of justice. It's always a pleasure to have you on, uh, Dr. Tunji Abayami, a legal we practitioner. We are in a mess! Well, we appreciate your coming this morning, Doctor. Uh, we'll be back. We have a lot to cover, a lot of grounds on this same matter. Do join us again. Please, there is a note of mouth.